Welcome back, America. All eyes are on President Biden's Supreme Court nominee, Katanji Brown Jackson, as she goes through her confirmation hearings, which, by the way, started today in the Senate Judiciary Committee. Uh, here to break this all down for us is Michael Davis, founder and president of the Article Three Project and former chief counsel for nominations at the, that very Senate Judiciary Committee. To give us the latest on Supreme Court nominations, Michael, great to have you on the show. Thank you for having me. I want to ask, we heard today that Judge Jackson is one of the most vetted judges ever to reach the Supreme Court, and uh, we know everything about her, but I understand that the committee's had a hard time getting uh, access to thousands of pages of documents. Tell us why that may be important and what documents those are. Yeah, so for Supreme Court nominees, the Senate Judiciary Committee gathers all of their records for their pro from their prior government service. And Judge Jackson served from 2010 to 2014 on the United States Sentencing Commission as the vice chairman. She's touting this as one of her uh, major qualifications for the Supreme Court. The problem is, is that uh, Senate Judiciary Committee Chairman Dick Durbin has refused a request by Republican senators to look at her records on the Sentencing Commission from 2010 to 2013. They didn't ask for her 2014 records because Judge Jackson became a federal judge in 2014. So it's just a very narrow and routine request for records, her internal deliberative records, her emails and her internal memos and deliberations from the Sentencing Commission. Chairman Durbin has refused to turn over these records and we now know why. And the reason is, is that uh, Judge Jackson, while she was on the Sentencing Commission, uh, advocated, publicly advocated in, in some hearings and then we don't know what she did behind the scenes to lessen the sentence for people who are convicted of possession and distribution of child pornography. They face mandatory minimum sentences under federal law of five years imprisonment. And Judge Jackson, for whatever reason, has been maneuvering to try to lessen the punishment for child pornographers. Wow. Yeah, Mike, and you know, that that said, that instance that you just cited is concerning, as well as the advocacy for Gitmo terrorists and the fact that she's supported by staunch pro-choice groups, the fact that Joe Biden said he was absolutely going to exclusively choose a black woman. All of those things are concerning. But the most concerning thing to me was that he said he wanted someone who had a living constitution perspective. This is diametrically opposed to what most conservative judges feel, which is that it's not a living document. Justice Scalia detailed this numerous times in speeches and in writings. Is that for you one of the most concerning aspects of Katanji Brown Jackson? Well, yeah, I mean, if you, if you have, they call it the empathy standard. Uh, and what that means is that it's whatever the heck that judge feels that day. Uh, the law is whatever she wants it to be. So if she wants the law to free Gitmo terrorists who go on to kill Americans, uh, that's what she advocated for. She got the five to four Supreme Court in 2008 to go along with her position. When she goes on the Supreme Court, she can just do whatever the heck she wants under her empathy standard. She's not bound by anything. She's not bound by the law at all. It's just whatever she feels. If she, if she thinks that we're too mean to to child sex predators, including people who possess and distribute child pornography, she could just, you know, make up the law however she wants it to be. That's that's the empathy standard. It's lawless. And so, yeah, it's a major problem. Yeah, it's amazing. And to not have uh, access to this entire body of records, do you, uh, what size are we talking about? How many records are we looking at, pages we're looking at? And what might they illuminate for us when you get there? Why is it so important that senators see the stuff before they vote? Well, so the Article Three Project had to piece together her cryptic statements and her cryptic advocacy on the Sentencing Commission, what she did publicly in hearings. We want to see what her thought process, what her deliberations were behind the scenes when the cameras were off, when there weren't transcripts. We want to see what her records show that she did behind the scenes from 2010 to 2013 to advocate for lesser sentences for people who possess and distribute child pornography. These are the worst people on the planet. And it's mind boggling that she thinks that we're too uh, too harsh to them. Yeah, it also is amazing to me how they are twisting history just a little bit, at least. Uh, Maisie Hirono this morning brought up the fact that she comes from a law enforcement family, so she couldn't possibly, you know, oppose law enforcement or be one of these folks on the side of, of lighter sentences or no sentences sometimes. How do you parse that out? Well, I mean, it, it, she, she has a record separate from, you know, what her father did. She has a record. I mean, she had an uncle who was in the federal defender's office in D.C. and defended sex crimes. So, you know, there's 
There's, uh, it, it just, it, we have to look at her record. Let's look at her 25 year record going back to Harvard Law School where she wrote a law school note, it's a publication where she said that we are, uh, that these child, or excuse me, these sex registry laws where convicted sex offenders have to register so you know if a, your, if your wife and kids know if the sex offender has moved in next door. She argued that they're essentially unconstitutionally punitive. We see her advocacy for uh, child uh, uh, for child pornographers on the Sentencing Commission, and then S Senator Hawley outlined seven specific cases as a district court judge where she had discretion, and she used that discretion to give a lower sentence to people who possess and distribute child pornography. The question that we need to, uh, what, that we need answered is why 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 is why are terrorists and child pornographers her pet issues? Yeah, such an important uh, all around issue. I want to turn for a second because. The, uh, there is an overarching shadow on this particular hearing, and that is the Kavanaugh hearings. A lot of Republicans said today, we're not going to be like the Democrats. We're not going to engage in personal attacks, trying to remind people what a circus, what a, uh, a, a mean girl's performance uh, the Kavanaugh hearings were. When you look out now, uh, will the Republicans score points with the public by trying to remind people of just how bad those hearings were? Well, I was the chief counsel for nominations, the staff leader during those hearings for then Chairman Chuck Grassley. I remember them very well. And we also have to remember how stupid it was for the Democrats to do what they did when you personally attack someone going after uh, Justice Kavanaugh for bogus allegations from when he's 17 years old, 35 years ago. Uh, th they're very concerned about going through Justice Kavanaugh's high school yearbooks and looking at bogus allegations by goofballs from his teenage years, but they're, the same Democrats are not at all interested in looking at the transcripts and other records from the Sentencing Commission for Judge Jackson, where she's advocating for leniency for, for people who sit around and watch child rape, because child pornography is child rape. These kids cannot consent. And it's just, it's appalling to me that Chairman Dick Durbin is hiding these records from the American people, uh, because he doesn't want the American people to know about Judge Katanji Brown Jackson's long advocacy for leniency for child pornographers. Yeah, your book from 30 years ago is fair game, but sentencing records from less than a decade ago, you know, are, are a no-go. What, what's your prediction regarding if she gets confirmed? Because there are a number of Republicans who voiced early support for her, although Mitch McConnell has also talked about how she was very vague on the notion of court packing. But do you think she makes it through? Uh, it went from, she was on a glide path last week and then when uh senator holly and then my group the article three project dug into her sentencing records both on the sentencing commission as a, and as a district court judge uh there's some uncertainty now and if i were joe manchin if i were kristen cinema if i were these senate democrats who were in cycle uh up for re-election uh this year i don't know if i would be so eager to be supporting this nomination i think i'd want to learn more yeah, it's just an amazing moment. Uh, 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 Josh Hawley today really enumerated some of these sentences and her constantly going below the guidelines and rejecting the prosecutor's sentences for child pornographers, for child sex offenders. Uh, we got about a, uh, uh, 60 seconds left. Tell us a little bit why that's so important and why the pattern is so consistent. Well, it's not a one-off. These are not one-off sentences where she made a mistake. This is not a one-off musing at the Sentencing Commission at one hearing where she's just you know, asking hypothetical questions. This is a 25 year pattern as a legal adult going back to her Harvard Law School days as a Sentencing Commissioner, a vice chair of the Sentencing Commission as a judge. And this shows to me, this proves to me that she doesn't think that people who possess and distribute child pornography are, are that bad, right? If she doesn't, I think they should be in prison for more than five years because of the proliferation of child pornography over the last decade with high-speed internet and easy access to cameras, these kids in the third world are being badly exploited uh, yeah. because there are creeps in America who are watching this stuff. Yeah, all you have to do is spend time with a, a child sex victim to just know how heinous the crime is. Mike Davis, it's an honor to have you on. Thanks for joining and making sense of this hearing today. Really appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me.